The government has implemented policies to support our hawkers by providing a conducive operating environment. We review these policies regularly to ensure that they are aligned with operating realities on the ground and for hawker centres to serve the needs of both hawkers and consumers. We recognise the cost pressures that hawkers face. In fact, according to an NEA survey, on average in 2023, cost of food ingredients accounts for nearly 60% of the operating costs. Manpower costs comes in second at 20%. Rental made up less than 10% of operating costs in hawker centres. Mr Leong also acknowledges that rent is not a major cost component in his speech earlier. While government does not regulate hawker food prices, NEA has measures in place to provide a conducive operating environment for hawkers. Now, first, on manpower costs, we have been paying close attention to two aspects, improving access to manpower and improving hawkers' productivity. We understand hawkers' challenges in hiring store assistants. This is something we need to balance with safeguarding the local identity of our hawker culture. We do so by ensuring that being a storeholder at NEA managed hawker centres remains reserved for Singapore citizens and permanent residents. In doing so, we, are, we also ensure low barriers to entry for Singaporeans who wish to enter the FMB business through the hawker trade. In Mr Leong Manwai and Mr Louis Charles' speech earlier, they suggested allowing one work permit holder per store to work as store assistants. Their suggestion is not inconceivable, actually. And there are real needs that the hawkers face in sourcing for manpower. But there are differences between hawker centres and other food establishments. Private coffee shops and F&B establishments operate like SMEs, so they are subjected to the usual quota system that MOM applies to all operating businesses here in Singapore. Our hawker centres, on the other hand, are an integral part of our cultural heritage and their unique and, and their local nature is something we want to preserve, which is why we thought very carefully about making such moves. This is why we calibrate any relaxation on restrictions on who can work at our hawker centres very carefully. As I said earlier, full liberalisation of manpower in hawker centres would significantly alter the makeup and the feel of these centres. There's really no science to this question. It is really about what we are all prepared to accept as a society. Are we prepared to accept that the hawker centre that we are familiar with changes in nature to something quite different? So I think this is something that will probably have to evolve over time. If members recall in the early 2010s, there was significant concern among Singaporeans about seeing more foreigners working in hawker centres. And this very issue was raised in this house, which earlier on Mr Edward Chia has also shared with members what was transpired in Parliament in 2010. So we need to strike a balance, as some Singaporeans may still not be able to accept seeing a significant alteration in the makeup of hawker centres, we will adjust and evolve our policies to make, take these views into account. Having said that, we do want to help ease some of the manpower challenges our hawkers face. This is why at Parliament last month, I had announced that starting from 1st January 2025, NEA will allow hawkers to hire long-term visit pass or LTVP plus holders with letters of consent or pre-approved LOCs to work as their store assistants at NEA managed hawker centres and NEA appointed operators regardless of family ties. Now, of course, many of you will be aware that prior to this, storeholders could only appoint such LTVP or LTVP plus holders to work as their store assistants if they had a spousal relationship, and even then, on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, hawkers can hire from an expanded pool of these potential store assistants who are already part of a Singapore family nexus. But the reality is that each additional headcount is an added cost to our hawkers. So a more sustainable approach to manpower is to make every person more productive. Therefore, NEA has implemented measures to support hawkers in enhancing their productivity, which can help lighten the pressures of their manpower constraints. At the centre level, the Productive Hawker Centres PSC programme provides up to 70% tiered subsidy for centres to adopt centralised dishwashing for up to four years. At the individual store level, the Hawkers Productivity Grant, the HPG, provides 80% co-funding 
for hawkers to purchase kitchen automation equipment and digital solutions such as queue management systems. A key business cost hawkers deal with is raw materials. Ms. Hazelpaw raised the suggestion on centralised procurement to moderate such costs. This is not a new suggestion. I believe uh, in an earlier parliamentary sitting, Mr. Alvin Young did raise one of these suggestions in a PQ. Now, this centralised procurement idea is already present at some SEHCs, where operators have tapped on their network in the FMB and food supply sectors to offer bulk purchasing services. With such services, their storeholders have the option to secure preferential rates for raw ingredients. Apart from manpower, the government has also implemented measures to ensure reasonable rent for hawkers and to address concerns on rent. By keeping rent affordable, we can, make, we can help make the cost of doing business lower for our hawkers, even if it's not by a large percentage, because rent is less than 10% of their operating costs. Generally, store renters at hawker centres are lower than nearby eating establishments such as coffee shops, food courts and small eateries. For majority of cooked food storeholders in our hawker centres, the median rent is around $1,250 per month and has remained rel relatively stable for the past 10 years. This has been the case while, even while overall prices have continued to rise over the decade. This also means, therefore, that the rent is now a smaller component of their cost compared to 10 years ago. The government also extends generous subsidies to a segment of our pioneer hawkers who make up around 30% of cooked food storeholders. For them, the rent is heavily subsidised at about $300 per month, and this can be transferred to the immediate family members of the pioneer hawkers at the same low rent.